H.A. Barnes and this is Jonathan McKinney. Good day to your friend. Is that alright? <laughs> and you're watching another episode of Writing, Talking and Dog Walking. We might get out of path because we're going up a hill. We are. Towards we're a castle. Climbing up towards a big castle. So if you are in America, yes, we all have a castle. As Eddie Izzard once said, we were up to our necks in castles. Uh, this is our castle. It's called Stafford Castle. <laughs> and we walk around the grounds daily. So today we're doing a video on setup and payoff. Um, we did one before explaining what it is and giving a few examples, but because it is such a rich subject, yes, it is. and the more you learn about it, the more you see it, the more you understand it, the better you will be able to then be at doing it. Right. So today's setup and payoff video, we are going to focus on, and oh, I'm all out of puff. <laughs> Die Hard. <laughs> Die Hard, which is, we've talked about it before. Um, but we we're going to talk about it again. Yeah, we, we talked about it in terms of the three-act structure. Yeah. This is a different conversation. It is. But this is why Die Hard's such an <laughs> excellent story. Because if you can do good setup and payoff, you are going to, your audience is going to feel yeah. like, included, in, feel yeah. um, and rewarded. And it enrichifies your story. It does. Excellent use of the word enrichifies as well. You. It embiggens your story. <laughs> it embiggens. In a cromulent way. It is most cromulent. <laughs> so yeah, we are knackered, aren't we? That's a hell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the watch. Okay, first. yeah. It's a good start. It's a good start. So John McLean arrives at the Nakatomi Nakatomi Tower. Tower plot. In LA. Yeah. In Los Angeles. To win back the love of his life, Holly. Yes. And um yeah, so there is a romantic antagonist in the form of that guy with the eighties oh, look. Yeah. Uh, we'll we'll find out what his character's name is and put it on screen so it looks like we knew all along. Um Can't yeah. remember. I think Paul. Could be. You know who we're talking about because, for one, his name's appeared on screen. <laughs> I'm setting your work. And two, right. <laughs> he is your classic 80s scumbag. He's a sleaze bag, right? Yeah, he is with his power suit and his yeah, his neat beard and his bushy beard. hair. And yeah, he looks like that guy. Good so, God. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, he is. He's a scumbag. He gives. Well, the company that Holly works for, gives John her, McClane's wife, gives her a watch. A beautiful gold watch because she's been so successful. Yeah. And it's like a recognition of all the work she's done. Yeah, but this sleazy guy whose name has appeared on screen. With the coke habit. Yeah, with the coke habit is sort of taunting John McClane with this new watch. He's like, show him the watch, right? Show him the watch. The watch. And, um, you know, you're on John McClane's side. He's your protagonist. And as you're watching it, you're like, oh, I just hate this guy, <laughs> right? He's like, show him the watch. So yeah, it's a, it's a indication of, we are superior to you. You can't give her a nice watch. We yeah. can give her a nice watch. What exactly. do you have for it's her? It's like, why would she go back to New York to be with you when she can stay here and, and have, have all nice expensive? Watches. So yeah, the, the payoff for this, of course, do you want to do it? This is no, great. I'm going around here, you do it. Okay, the payoff for this is at the very end of the story, you're familiar, you've seen it before. Um, John McLean is holding his wife's hand and holding on to his wife is Hans Gruber, the villain, outside, you know, the, dangling off the side of this tower. And um, yeah, the way that he manages to shake loose the villain, Hans Gruber, is he unclips the watch. So the watch it's and like, the villain screw you. in one go. Yeah. <laughs> the offensive watch and the offensive villain go plummeting yeah. down. And there Isn't is. that very classic, like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody knows. It's, it's very, very excellent. It's an image of Christmas right there. Yeah, we should watch it. We said that last time, but we didn't. So yeah, the um, what this does is it resolves the problem of your villain, who needs to be resolved because he's your villain. It also feels like sort of emotional comeuppance for the, the company. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's a way for John McLean to kind of get one over them. Yeah. Because he can be like, look, you can give her a fancy watch, but I can save her life. Yeah, stitch that. <laughs> Stitch that, Jimmy. Knock a um, That was a wet God. dog. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Stop a second just and look at this view before right. we carry on. This is our castle grounds as we were explaining. Go up a bit. Go to that. Ah, uh, uh, look. You're seeing all the way to... And then turn around so you can see our castle. Beyond. Look, look, there's our castle. You see what good state it's in? It actually looks like it is in a good state. It's it does. Not, it's, it's a bit run down. It's decrepit, look. But that's our castle. Yeah. We <laughs> all have one each, remember, Americans. So. Yeah, um, they they are able to. Dear God, this dog. They are able. To, uh, the writers the writers are able to 
um, satisfy something that you didn't even really, you will have forgotten because so much action's happened. Yeah, but when and then you you're like, it, ah, that watch. Um, another really good one is fists with your toes. Fists with your toes, right. So they're on the aeroplane and um, he's yeah, a he nervous doesn't like flyer. flying. So. so the guy he's sitting next to says the way he copes with um, flying is when he gets onto solid ground again, Yep. he makes fists with his toes. Right. Which is why John McLean ends up with no shoes on in right. Nakatomi Tower. Yeah, which is just more pressure applied to him through the story because not only does he have to fight terrorists and save his wife and all the people she works with, he also is barefoot and there's people shattering glasses and stuff and, and so, um, yeah so he's like hobbling around and cutting his feet and he's in a lot of pain yeah. a very quick aside if you can find ways to like put hurdles in front of your protagonist yeah. like that uh, little practical things that make it more difficult for them to do what they have to do it makes your story function yeah. a lot better that's the throwing stones at them when they're up the tree thing we yeah. talked about exactly. make it harder make it harder make yeah. it harder all yeah. the time make yeah. it harder yeah take away their their power like let's see how they do without it and challenge yeah. them to to grow um, so the policeman who um, helps John McLean on the outside of the building. Yes. Um, again, forget his name. Al. Al, Al, really? Okay, great, we know one. Um, he um, tells a story to John McLean about a time that he shot a kid, right? And this is, this is devastating yeah, um, to, to he, hear about. He's not shot a gun since. He yeah. can't bring himself to because he accidentally shot a child. Right, exactly. Um, so as you know, viewer, um, there's a classic moment where one of the terrorists who we thought was dead isn't dead and John McLean's come out with Holly around like you know in a tinfoil thing yeah and they're uh, they're they're sort of celebrating the victory but they're you know counting the cost of lives lost etc etc and um, yeah this terrorist who we thought was dead but isn't comes running out screaming like a madman yeah um, with a with a machine gun I think <laughs> and he gets yeah he takes a couple of bullets and we don't know who shot the gun and you, you see you see Al um, standing yes. there looking like a hero he did what he had to do it's it's powerful it's yeah it's it's unnecessary but it's really satisfying it's really satisfying because it's him um as a character arc it's like a real side character yeah but it's taking him on a journey where he's able to then do his job again and he's able to do what he was you know too scared to do yeah because there is molly a, there's a version of die hard a theoretical version of die hard out there that exists in the realms what you doing wherein um he kills hans gruber by just shaking his hand loose yeah where the terrorist who we thought was dead but isn't actually is and none of that stuff happens or where the, the guy hasn't been through that trauma and just shoots him yeah yeah exactly. and it's it's fine and the story and the works story the same works way fine, and people would still like it but they wouldn't have it as dear to them as time goes by as they do because of these things and that's exactly. why you want to, to insert these ideas into your storytelling because your audience okay. then feels like you are um respecting them and giving them something for them specifically right. because it's not for you necessarily as the writer because your story would still function the same yeah, way absolutely you still tell the same story you still have the same characters and you still go on the same journey so these details are effort you put in that is, as they say, technically unnecessary right. to make your story happen. But the fact you go through the trouble, you think of them and you weave yeah. them in neatly, it exactly. shows you are respecting your audience yeah. in a way you don't have to, but do because your audience yeah. deserves it. And this very principle is something I applied when I wrote that Unholy way? Water. Yeah, let's get that way. Morning! Um, when I wrote Unholy Water, which was a Halloween novel, came out two years ago. Um, the, I got to the end of my story and I'd written all of the emotional stuff and I realised that the, the, there was a very strong possibility that the, the fight, if you like, between, I guess, the most villainous character and the most heroic character would end with her just sort of killing him. Uh, he's a vampire. Um, with her just kind of killing him because she's good at killing vampires and that's not good enough. So I needed to come up with something. I came up with a, an idea. I'm not going to say what it is in case you haven't read it and you want to. But I came up with an idea which I went back and I planted in. the seeds for. I used the narrative triplet, which we've talked about, yeah. so that by the time you I'll get put there. Links to all this stuff. And what I found is doing that also gave me an opportunity to um, to develop the emotional impact of something that happened to that female character's uh, that female character in her younger life, yeah. which relates to the death of her parents. So this, really nice this done, is, by the way. Well, thank you very much. But I could have easily just written, she sticked him in the heart and he died. You know? And the thing is, as I say, the story would still have happened. Yeah. Most of the story wouldn't have changed. It would carry on. You wouldn't have had to do anything no. different. 
but taking the time, as I say, it's for your audience, not for you. Yeah, absolutely. And if you as a writer can take that time to respect your audience enough to go to that effort, they will notice. Yeah, they will. And they will appreciate it. And for so many reasons, they will then hold your story closer to them. Yeah. Because they can feel, even if they can't put words to it, even if they don't understand what it is that they're, they're experiencing, they will see these details and understand what you as a writer have done. Yeah. And you will also, as I did, you'll find out that by doing this, it actually elevates other aspects of your story. You didn't even intend to be elevated by it. Yeah. And that is the beauty of it. That's the best thing about it, actually. It's the thing I love most about yeah. foreshadowing and setting things up and then paying it, makes it off. makes everything else better. Is it literally will provide extra character um, details, extra character emotions, just more character, which means more entertainment I for agree. your reader. So yeah, if you watch, I mean, there's loads of others, but we've only got one video, so. We do, look um, at this. If you go, I know, it's ridiculous. If you go um, back and watch Die Hard again. Yep. Watch the, I'm just gonna down here. <laughs> watch the setup and payoff, notice it. Understand how it makes you as an audience feel. Right. And try and replicate yeah. it. But as you say, go back into the earlier parts of your story watch our yeah. narrative triplets video the, the great we've news. got a couple of those you can watch and you can look at those and work out how to do it yeah the great news is you don't have to have all this figured out when you before you start the Editing. chances are you can't have all this figured out before you start what you do is you write your story it works perfectly fine you're in love with it and then you go back and you make it even better you make it really strong that's why editing is such an important process yeah um yeah not just to catch typos and stuff, yeah but. because you get to do this sort of thing and it doesn't take a lot. The um, the book I'm writing at the minute, I mean, I won't tell you like the culmination of it, but the book I'm writing at the minute, uh, in the first um, act, she has a little house made of matchsticks that she made when she was a child. Right. And I hadn't got anything, but because I'm editing now, so I got to the end of my story and I was like, I need something that's symbolic, yeah. representative of how she feels. Yeah, something that demonstrates the change the in change, a metaphorical way. Exactly, the change that she has gone through, where she feels as a person, so I went back and I have this um, at the process now of weaving this matchstick yeah. house into the story yeah. so that when we get to the end, it's a statement yeah. of how Ivy feels as a person. Yeah. So yeah, look out for it and do it because it is worth it. It is definitely worth it. the effort into doing it, it is worth it. Yeah. So thank you very much for watching our video on Set Up and Pay Off referencing the extremely excellent film Die Hard. We hope you enjoyed the tour of our castle. <laughs> our castle. Our, castle. our very own personal castle. <laughs> we'll have one. Um, if you could drop a comment down below, if you want us to talk about any of this stuff in any of the films or books or, or TV shows that you love, um, give us some because we would love to do videos on things you love. Um, and also it'll help more people. As I say, the more you see it, the more you understand how to do it yourself. That's right. So yeah, drop us a comment below. Also, if you come and talk to us on Twitter, I'm Judy Ann Rose and he's John Merck. All the links to everything is gonna be in this bit. So go there and you can come and talk to us about writing over there because we love it, because we it's do. our favorite thing in the world. Other than like, you know, children. The children are great, yeah. But writing is brilliant. <laughs> 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 so yeah, come and talk to us over there. Um, also, if you could subscribe to this channel and like this video, it would mean a, the world to us because we are trying to grow. We are trying to reach more people. We are trying to do more work. And if you give us that like and subscribe, that is helping us do it. And it's a, it means a lot. So thank you very much. And we will be back again with another video. Cool. Bye. Goodbye.